Chantu nang nara janma dulabha mata Hungstvang tato viprata Tasmad vaidika dharma marga parata Vidvatvam asmat parang Atman atma vivechanang svanubhavo Brahmatmana sangstitihi Muktir no shatta janma koti sukritai Punyair vinalabhyate For all beings, a human birth is difficult to obtain. More so is a male body. Rarer than that is birth as a brahmana. Rarer still is attachment to the path of Vedic religion. Higher than this is erudition in the scriptures, discrimination between self and not-self, realization and continuing in a state of identity with Brahman. These come next in order. This kind of mukti, liberation, is not to be attained except through the well-earned merits of a hundred crore of births. Namaste. So this is the opening verse of Shankaracharya's Viveka Chudamani. Viveka means discrimination and Chuda means the crown, the top, and Mani means jewel. So this crown jewel of discrimination is between Brahman and non-Brahman, between the seer and the seen. And we already did a, an extensive series on Drishya Vivekaha, which you can see here. But uh, this work by Shankaracharya extends the thoughts the series or pattern of thoughts that we already um, expressed in our series on the secret path to moksha. So if you successfully negotiate this secret path and you gain the moksha, you are among the rarest of all the creatures in the material world. How rare? Well, Shankaracharya lays it out here. A human birth is difficult to obtain for all beings. How difficult? Well, consider that there was just a study released where scientists estimate that there are 20,000 billion ants in the world. And they say this is probably a low estimate. There probably are a lot more that we don't know about. <laughs> so for every one human being, there are at least 10,000 ants. And what to speak of smaller creatures like worms and bacteria? The smallest creature in the Vedic knowledge is called the Indragopa germ or worm. And it's like microscopic. It's tiny, tiny. And millions or billions of them can be found in anything that's decaying, any organic matter that's rotting and like that. So how many of them are there compared to human beings? It's, it's uncountable. So in other words, the odds of getting a human birth are tiny indeed. And then out of those who are born as humans, it's rarer to get a male body. Statistically, males are something like 48% of human beings. Females are more numerous genetically. Uh, this is the arrangement of nature. And now before all the women's lib types 
come down on me with nasty posts. <laughs> yes, there is a difference between men and women. There's a difference in the intelligence, and this is also an arrangement of nature. The female body, the female mind, is more attached to embodiment, more attached to maya, for the protection of the offspring, so that the uh, children are more protected, well protected and taken care of. Men are more detached, naturally. So when this detachment is cultivated, and it leads to being born as a brahmana, a brahmana is a person whose livelihood, whose occupation is earned from intelligence. This is the defining characteristic of a brahmana as given in Bhagavad Gita. And he also says in Bhagavad Gita that the qualification of a brahmana or any caste or any varna is the proper word is not by birth, but by quality and work. Guna karma. He doesn't say that the castes or varnas are distinguished by birth. He says by quality and work. So if one has this quality of intelligence and can actually make their living by intelligence, they have the quality of a brahmana. And even among brahmanas, those who are attached to the Vedic literatures are rare. And of those even who have mastered the Vedic literatures, those who actually practice them are even scarcer. <laughs> we see, especially here in India, many people who even will go to college, go to school, and earn advanced degrees in Vedic literature, but their only interest is in making a living. This is not actually the purpose of the Vedas, which is actually self-realization. So those who actually take the path of self-realization and discriminating between spirit and matter, between consciousness and everything else, basically, are the rarest of all. And out of those, those who have achieved liberation, enlightenment, who actually realize themselves as a spiritual being are very rare. Maybe, as uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, one in 10,000. So among those, those who continue to stay in the path of discrimination are rarer still, the rarest of all. It's often seen that someone will attain realization and then go off and become like a big guru or um, even get involved in politics or welfare activities, distributing food and so on. Whereas actually their duty is to remain in the state of liberation, to remain in samadhi, concentrated on Brahman. So those who take this path to the very end and stick with it are very, very, very rare and hard to find. This is the point. So why should it be like this when every human being, indeed every sentient being, whether in human form or not, is actually capable of self-realization? Ramana Maharshi proved this by bringing a cow, Lakshmi the cow, to enlightenment in her final moments. So, <laughs> you see, anybody can become self-realized, but those who do are extremely rare. So, why is this? Well, it's because we become overwhelmed by maya just like I'm here in Rishikesh. And even though Rishikesh is supposed to be a holy place, there is all kinds of nonsense going on. The place, the neighborhood where I'm at is called Tapuvan. 
Tapa, of course, means austerity. But you can't find anybody here <laughs> who's engaged in austerity, in meditation. Everyone is engaged in sense enjoyment. So I think they ought to rename it Bhogavan. <laughs> Because there's all kinds of tourists here, there's discos, bars, all kinds of drugs are available, what to speak of sex life and so on. So, I mean, this is like almost every holy place in India has gone downhill like this. It's very, very sad. But that doesn't change the truth. And the truth is that purpose of human life is self-realization, nothing else. That's why if one fails to adopt the path or make the determination to seek liberation in this human form of life, it's tantamount to suicide, especially for those who have some learning, who have some intelligence and knowledge, those who know, who can, who can read in the Vedic scriptures or hear that the purpose of life is self-realization. If they don't take it up, if they don't pursue self-realization with every ounce of determination and skill, knowledge or whatever they've got, it's like saying, ah, I don't care, I'm just gonna commit suicide. Because that means what? In the next life, they're going to get a lower birth. And, of course, it's hard to say exactly what. But in these days, we know so many people are involved in meat-eating, for example, that it's almost certain in the next life they're going to be born as a farm animal and have to go through the whole hellish trip of being used for food and like that. It's very sad. But what can we do? We can't force anyone to study the Vedas. We can't force them to meditate. We can't force people to become renounced or to become sadhus or perform austerities. This is all a matter of self-determination. By one's intelligence, one evolves the desire, the sankalpa, that I will become liberated in this very life and I will do whatever it takes even if you fail, it means a higher birth in the next life. And there is going to be a next life because consciousness never dies. Consciousness is eternal. The proof of it is we are conscious. We are the same consciousness, the same being, the same entity, the same person. From the moment we come out of the womb or even before that, until our last breath. So this is going to happen to everybody. Everybody is going to grow old and die. Everybody is going to have to change the body. The body is deteriorating day by day. Every day we get older. So it's only a matter of time before we have to change the body. We cannot keep this body forever. So therefore, one should engage in the process of self-realization to get the actual value of this human existence, which is moksha, mukti, enlightenment, self-realization or salvation. Aung tatsa, aung shakti aung, aung namah shivaya, <laughs>